Hey guys, after purchasing this boat from Emmanuel at Townsville Marine a little over a year ago, I've had a number of inquiries from people by phone and email uh, asking my impression of the hull, impression of how it goes and uh, exactly how I've decked it out for the type of fishing that I do. The hull itself is actually badged as a Seafarer Vantage 4.85 metres. Uh, but uh, since Haynes purchased the Seafarer name uh, a few years ago, this boat is now more well known as a 485 SF. Uh, and if you were to purchase the boat from Townsville Marine today, uh, that's what you would be getting. You'll be getting a Haynes 485 SF. Uh, but uh, this hull, being a, even though it's a Seafarer, the hull itself is identical. Uh, the layout has changed very little. The front casting deck is basically the same. The rear casting deck has had a few changes to the hatches in it, but otherwise it's essentially the same boat. This hull uh, is actually an 08 hull. I purchased it second hand. Uh, the trailer is also 08, but it wasn't sold as a new boat for a couple of years after that. Uh, so when I purchased it, it uh, didn't have too many hours on it and was in very, very good condition. Uh, in order to make the boat more my own though, I, you know, having been a second hand boat, uh, I decided to put a wrap on the boat. Uh, and Nick from the Sign Guys did the design for me. I was looking for something that was a combination between a, uh, a blue water theme and a, a creek theme. So we've got the sailfish blended into the barramundi at the back sitting in the mangroves there. Uh, so that worked really nicely. I'm very happy with it and it really makes the boat look more my boat rather than something that I've purchased second hand. Uh, this boat to me is about the fourth or fifth boat that I've owned and having stepped down from a larger uh, uh, reef, I guess, or cabin reef boat, uh, this has been a, a real delight to own. Uh, it's not a chore to go fishing anymore. It's very, very easy to tow behind the Pajero, uh, launch and retrieve it on my own if need be. Uh, it's the sort of boat that you don't mind putting in the, the water for an hour or two and going for a flick and pulling it back out and washing it up. Okay, so the hull does have somewhat of a cigar shape to, to it down here at the back. It's quite rounded, but it does have a very fine entry at the front cuts through uh, 10 to 15 knot wind chop better than any boat I've ever ridden in and uh, is incredibly stable at rest too which is ideal for obviously lure casting uh, and standing on the, the sides of the boat. There's very little rock, very little tip. Uh, so it's, it's a spectacular hull uh, in terms of performance uh, both cutting through the water and at rest. The motor that's on my boat is a Suzuki 4 stroke 80 horsepower. Uh, the hull is rated to take up to a 90 horsepower motor uh, Emmanuel did have a 90 horsepower on his 485 uh, and we found that the performance between the two motors was only very slight. Uh, this boat achieves a top speed of around about 31 knots with the 80. Emmanuel was able to achieve around about 32, 33 knots, a very minimal top speed difference. Uh, there are a few boats in town, the same as this hull, that have 60 horsepower motors on them and those guys are finding that a jacking plate uh, on the motor is making a big difference and they're getting speeds virtually the same as this with 60 horses. Uh, so I am considering a jacking plate for the 80 uh, and hopefully with that might be able to achieve speeds closer to 40 knots. It's not a, a heavy hull, it's not a difficult hull to push through the water, uh, so achieving those sorts of speeds from an 80 should be quite possible. Fuel economy is very good uh, at a cruise speed of uh, around about 23, 24 knots. Uh, the boat's, boat's using around about 0.3 litres a kilometre, uh, so very economical running. With 120 litres of fuel under the floor, you know, that's a range well over 300 kilometres. And uh, when you're creek fishing and fishing around the bays and islands, certainly makes for very economical boating. Okay, so up the front of the boat here, clearly we have a, uh, a recessed anchor well. Uh, that holds plenty of rope. I don't keep an anchor in there at all. I never anchor in this boat, uh, but there's plenty of storage in there for the rope. Uh, the top space here also makes an excellent uh, standing platform for lure casting, gets you up a little bit higher off the front casting deck uh, and a little bit closer to the edge too. So I quite like standing up the front there, plenty of space. Uh, obviously a uh, bow mounted uh, Minn Kota eye pilot. This is an 80 pound eye pilot, which uh, is you know, more than sufficient for pulling this boat around. 55 pound probably would do the job uh, on this boat, but I chose to go up to the 80 pounds so that, uh, you know, in strong wind and strong current, it's uh, more than ample for the job. 
Um, back from that on the, uh, the casting deck itself, uh, we have a forward hatch that uh, contains the, uh, the two batteries. Uh, so there are two uh, Sentry deep cycle AGM batteries. They're both 120 amp hour uh, batteries. So that provides 24 volts for the 80 pound uh, Minn Kota. And behind that, uh, quite a large, um, I guess, live bait tank slash storage well. Um, I use this as uh, esky space. Uh, it's not technically insulated, but being built from fiberglass, it uh, you know it holds three bags of ice all day long. And being very very long uh, in length, it's great for uh, you know long fish like mackerel and uh, barramundi, etc. I do still have the bow rails. Uh, on this boat. Uh, that was uh, more my wife's choice than anything to leave those on there, uh, more for safety for the kids than anything. They could be easily removed or you could order a boat without bow rails. Um, and the, you know, the Minn Kota Electric has been designed to uh, squeeze in down between the bow rail and the boat so it doesn't get in the way at all. And I, you know, I have to admit that uh, very rarely have I you know, bumped the rail with a rod. Uh, so at this stage, I'm happy for them to stay until the kids maybe get a little bit older and they do get in the way of fishing. And mounted off to the starboard side is the 998 Humminbird uh, side image sounder. Uh, this sounder connects uh, via a cable directly to the main unit on the console. So all waypoints, uh, GPS position, sounder data is shared between the two units so it can be displayed front and back. Uh, had a little bit of trouble mounting this, trying to find the right position uh, so that both hatches could open uh, so that it tilted back and you got a good view from the front still. But I also decided to keep it inside uh, the edge of the boat in on the casting deck itself uh, so that it does can you know, spray over the side when it's a bit choppy and a bit windy. So it protects it a little bit from that salt spray, keeps the front nice and clean uh, so that it should last a little bit longer. Um, just looking after it. Okay, so in addition to this boat after I purchased it is the, uh, the rod locker that went into the side. Now this is uh, just over seven feet in length. Uh, it was designed to run flush between the front and the rear casting deck so that you can actually walk along uh, the locker and gives you a walk around uh, on the sides here wide enough for feet. Uh, this was uh, designed and put in by Chris from Fiber Finish and he's done a great job on that. Uh, inside there's plenty of space. I've only got a couple of rods in there at the moment uh, but you can quite comfortably get sort of around about six rods in there when you put them front and back. So you know three rods per angle are quite comfortable. Uh, if you go wrapping towels around reels etc you can actually squeeze a lot more than that in there as well. And to, uh, to finish off the rod locker concept, we decided to install a, uh, a second storage bin uh, on the opposite side, just runs from the console forward to the front platform. Same height, same design as the rod locker on the other side, designed again to be able to be stood on and cast from. So it almost gives a 360 walk around ability on the boat. And I just keep boxes of lures, etc., in there. So it's, it's essentially just a storage bin. Under the, uh, the flooring here at the front is a, uh, an extra hatch. Absolutely nothing in that hatch for me at the moment, um, but it's a good little place for, um, for additional storage. Uh, you can keep the anchor or extra rope, etc., in there. Okay, back towards the, uh, the rear casting deck. Um, we've got storage hatches on, uh, on both sides, port and starboard. Um, on the, uh, the port side, there is a dual battery 12 volt system in there um, to run the starting motor and all of the electronics. A small, uh, I guess, you know, could be a live bait well built into the back here. Um, it's not plumbed for me. Uh, it ends up just being my bin, basically. All the rubbish ends up in there for the day and is easily collected. Uh, I guess the big issue with making that into a live bait tank, as it currently stands, the, the drainage is basically straight into the hull. It doesn't go uh, to the outside of the boat at all. So that would have to be plumbed in differently to become a live bait tank. Okay, on the console, obviously, is where all the cool stuff is. Uh, so the, uh, the main Humminbird 998 side image sounder is mounted onto the console. Uh, very nice uh, viewing from driving along and obviously connected to the front unit. The GMI 10 that connects uh, to the Suzuki motor uh, gives all the engine information, fuel consumption, uh, etc. from there. Underneath that, I've got a, uh, a Fusion MP3 player that has a USB uh, ability to plug in a USB key with music. Um, I've never had a, a radio or any kind on a boat like that before, um, but I must say that uh, having had this one on here, I quite like to have a bit of music going when you're lure casting. 
and mounted in under the console is a Uniden uh, VHF radio and I've gone for a, a nice short antenna that attaches to that so that there's nothing to get in the way for casting and moving around the boat. On the side of the console I've mounted just two uh, very cheap plastic rod holders uh, mainly for putting rods uh, when you're moving along between positions or swapping between rods just keeps them handy, keeps them out of the way and uh, prevents them from being laying on the floor. The console on this boat has been positioned more towards the back of the boat than what it is out of the factory uh, and the seating in it, the pedestal seats have been removed completely, uh, means that it's a very open deck space for fishing, perfect for lure casting, uh, but it does mean that to drive the boat you are sitting on the rear casting deck, but we've found even with two kids and two adults sitting along that rear casting deck and all the weight at the back of the boat, we've still had no problems keeping the nose down, no problems getting on the plane uh, whatsoever. Performance is still very good. The boat is sitting on a Dunbeer single axle brake trailer uh, with a roller configuration designed for easy drive on and drive off launching. Okay guys, that's a, a quick rundown of my uh, Seafair Advantage 4.85 aka Haynes 485SF. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video uh, and I'll see you on the water soon.